On most days, this was in 1971, we addressed her as Dr. Rolfe. Once in a while, after receiving a sharp glance of surprised approval, we might be bold enough to call her Ida. More rare were the intimate moments when her generous heart stood in front of her almighty mission, when something made her laugh and laugh. This gained us camaraderie with the woman who liked to pin a rose in her hair. We might then call her Ida Pauline, though we knew such bantering wouldn't last. I think she would be pleased at what we've accomplished in the past 36 years. She'd be impatient, but bemused by our squabbles. She would like us to have done more, perhaps, but she was a realist. This is Ed Mopin. I've been rolfing since I was 33 years old, and I'm 80 years old now. I love this work. I'm so grateful to Ida for having devised this unique way of working with people's bodies. Dr. Rolf, 45 years ago, I received your work, and I was profoundly transformed from a cerebral mathematician into someone who wanted to share with others what you had given me. I think there's one admonition that was one of your favorites that you would want me to share, and that would be, go deeper. Hi, this is Dan Bienenfeld, and I'm the senior trainer and training director of the Hellerwerk School of Structural Integration. It's a great honor to be a part of this SI community continuing your legacy. We are all so fortunate that we have a community to be a part of. I am happy to say that your following of teachers and leaders continue to hold the torch of the work in the most diverse ways. I heard that you were very curious about what a community would be like of people who were all on their lines. I believe you lived to see that it was not necessarily that easy or harmonious to have so many individuals with strong bodies and intellect trying to work together to both sustain and to evolve the work that you created. I say this because I wholeheartedly believe in the evolution of the psyche in process with the physical changes that SI creates. This is Gail Rosewood. I studied with Dr. Ida Roth in 1969. She left a lasting impression, an impression of a woman with clarity, persistence, and certainty about her own knowledge and path. She did not need and would not wait to be validated by either science or society. This self-referential courage continues to be a role model for me to this day. Thank you, Dr. Rolf, for the many words, phrases, concepts, theories, and absolutes that I have used each day of the past 35 years while teaching a second-generation version of the SI work that stems from my study, understanding, experience, and application of your evolutionary work. I remember you many times in Florida. My most vivid memory is sitting in the garden, sharing together, and there were many peacocks dancing all around us. You suggested we lie on the ground and view them. It was an intense experience of joy, laughter, and a touch of fear. I didn't know at the time I would be teaching your work. That experience in the garden, on the ground, remains a poignant experience for me. Hi, this is Tom Myers, and since we're standing beside Ida Rolf's grave, let me tell a story from uh, during the time of her dying. I visited her four days before she died. She was in the nursing home in, in Bryn Mawr. She was tiny. Uh, all the power had been sucked out of her body by the cancer that she was suffering from, and only her hands and her head had much energy left. And she was so polite. She was clearly very, very involved in her own process, but she was so polite to me. And um, I ventured what I never would have ventured in life, which was to stroke her forehead. And, and uh, just she looked so small and so helpless there. And I said, "Are are you in pain?" And, she said, no, I'm comfortable. 
And there was a pause, and then up came the finger, which I knew she was going to make a point. Always her finger would come up when she was going to make a point. And she said, but I'm still not sure how I would define comfortable. I thank you so much for the special opportunities that you provided to me and to so many. By training me in your work, I had no idea of body work or if I even had an aptitude, but your training gave me the experience and the skills that I needed to begin. And also for asking me to create the first movement program for your work. Both of those started in 1968. I thank you so much for these gifts. And after 47 years, I'm still extremely active in the work and in this field. By now, Dr. Roth, there are millions of people who have been affected by your and touched by your work and your theories. And I'm assuming that they are sending you messages of appreciation as well. It is with profound gratitude and appreciation and recognition that, that I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the gift that you have given all of us, which is the ability to be able to be of service to other people. As a result of your life's work, I have been able to turn my life into a vessel of helping other people improve their lives with your brilliance of structural integration. As a result of all that you've shared with all of us, we have people all over the world that are finding a higher level of being. They're finding a more easy way to be in what can be a difficult experience, which is this human experience. David Davis uh, calling and um, um, just leaving the recording about um, what I would say to Dr. Rolf, which is thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this precious, wondrous gift to humanity and the opportunity to get to do the work. Because of you, I have a profession that is deeply satisfying and effective in ending human suffering from countless pathologies and even more importantly, evolving my client's passion for living. Thank you for having the vision to see and think multidimensionally and for making the invisible visible. Hello, Ida Pauline. It's Susan Melchior here. I would like to thank you for the gift of structural integration you brought to the world, a gift that has helped so many in so many ways. I'd like to thank you for having the genius and forethought of taking your work and creating the 10 series recipe so that it could be taught to others. I first met Dr. Rolf in 1971, and I knew immediately she was a moment of history those of us that were with her at the time realized that uh, she was a true human being who was trying to alert us to be better human beings. Uh, at the time, uh, Emmett Hutchins, Peter Melchior, and Michael Salveson were the rising stars, and we would sit around Dr. Rolf and listen to her um, expound on the need for us to work with people to get them out of their doingness and more into their beingness. In other words, to make us true human beings. I'm Denise Foster Scott, president of the International Association of Structural Integrators. If I could say anything to Dr. Rolf if she were alive today, it would be the hugest thank you. Thank you for creating such a profoundly dynamic work. The way it has affected my life has been multifaceted. I am a completely different person than I was before I did the Structural Integration Series. I have developed into a person that I wanted to be, and I was able to evolve into what was always potentially inside of me. I also now have this richly fulfilling career where I'm able to facilitate this opening for individuals that come into the practice and... It's so much better than being a desk jockey, that's for sure. I am very happy to have chosen the road less traveled.